Olá pessoal, a gente está aqui de novo no Brazilian Retail Week. Uh, nós vamos fazer como na, no outro bate-papo que a gente teve com o Ben Pring. Começa a falar em português, mas o nosso papo depois vai ser em inglês e vocês vão ver aqui tá, uh, uh, os letreiros em português para que vocês possam entender o nosso papo. So here I have with Tahir Hussein. Uh, am I right? With the... Okay. And uh, it's uh, I'm proud to have you here. So uh, let me uh, make uh, the first question for you. Uh, are you there f uh, since? Um, today, uh, today is my is my second day here in Brazil. I arrived yesterday, and in my function as uh, global senior advisor for McKinsey, I've been meeting with some clients. And today, I'm very proud to be speaking at your event. Nice. And at the backstage, you said that you uh, lived in uh, Beijing, yes. And uh, is there any difference in uh, between uh, among uh, Beijing and São Paulo? What do you think uh, in these uh, first impressions here in our city? Yeah, both of them are very big cities, very vibrant cities. So uh, I always like to watch people and see what's happening. Uh, I think there's a lot of similarities and you feel the growth, the vibrance, the action. Uh, but I, I need to stay a little bit longer to get a, a better understanding. But it's, I've been looking forward to come to Brazil for a long time. Thank you for uh, being the trigger for me to come here. Oh, nice. Uh, so let me uh, ask you about digital transformation. It is a, a global issue in uh, every segment of the economy and, and the market, and of course, uh, mainly if we consider the retail business. Well, uh, what's, uh, what you can tell, what you can say to our uh, audience about the, the main topics that involves uh, digital transformation in business? Uh, where can we start? From where we can uh, uh, trig the, this uh, process? It's about leadership. It's about culture. What do you think? Yeah. So these uh, actually will be some of the parts I will I will be presenting. But uh, I think there's a couple of elements that I'm very passionate about. One is, for me, it's all about working from the customer backwards. So uh, uh, digital transformation is working and looking how you can satisfy the customer. I think that's one. And then combining with innovation. I think that's the second one. Innovation is not easy, but innovation is if you do something new, if you go to the unknown. And then you mentioned a very important element. It has a lot to do with culture. Culture is how the leadership of a company is actually thinking about the future. Do they think long term? Do they have bold visions? Are they not just saying they want to be bold and transformed, but they're actually living it. So I think customer obsession, innovation, and then culture and leadership are three things that for me are very important when you talk about digital transformation. Yes, it's much easier to talk about it than to do it uh, inside the companies. Why, uh, in your experience uh, all over the world, in the countries that, that you knew uh, and the experience uh, uh, you had, even in Amazon, Why is so hard to develop this culture of innovation and this uh, and this digital culture uh, uh, inside the, the companies? What what is the issues? What is uh, because why is so hard to do it I I inside the companies? Yeah, so during my time at Amazon, it was also a lot of things were uh, challenged. But I think by and large, it's when you have a strong leadership and and vision uh, that has that attaches to customer obsession, to innovation, and you experience it every day, it, it actually feels not that difficult. Now, with companies that haven't had the customer focus or that have been in their same mindset for many years, to change the mindset is hard. And I think the companies that are most successful in digital transformation are where the leaders are willing to do brand new things. Unfortunately, in my experience with many clients that I've uh, served as a senior advisor for McKinsey is that willingness at the senior level is not always there. And when you don't have the willingness to try out brand new things, then it becomes hard to convince your organization to change. So it's a, it's a question of will, it's a question of vision. So digital transformation and all, all the forts we have to do to improve the innovation in our business, it starts with a vision? I think it starts with the vision and the mindset of the leadership. 
these are in very simple terms is uh, when you have a vision that is not three months away, but five years away, six, seven, eight years away, and a vision that is customer focused. So when I talk to clients, uh, when I talk to senior leaders, I say, what's your vision in the next three to five years towards your cust uh, customer? How are you going to excite the customer? When you have that vision and when you have a possibility to explain it and communicate it to your organization, that's number one. The second one is, what are some of the uh, cultural things that you need to establish? And sometimes also culture means you may have to bring in fresh blood, new blood, people who have not been immersed in the same thinking for many years. You have to find the right balance. Yes. So uh, let's talk about the consumer. Uh, you trip around the world, uh, uh, you, I, I think you, you, you know a lot of countries. Uh, is there any uh, global mindset that drives the consumer behavior right now, that drives them and push them uh, 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 to the digital transformation, that makes them uh, uh, push the companies for their side? We want uh, digital, we don't want friction. We want uh, 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 stores and services that are absolutely frictionless. Is there a global mindset that uh, 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 improves this kind of behavior in uh, consumers? So that's a very good question I've got a lot. So I think a lot of the things that customers want, they are the same all over the world. Customers want a lot of selection. They want good convenience. They want trust. They want good prices. And these are the things that are uh, the same all around the world. Now what is different is how you can excel in providing those services to the customers. That is a function of where you are in the country, the infrastructure you have. Brazil has um, some very unique opportunities, big market, has some challenges in terms of logistics. And that's where you have the difference. But customers are by and large very similar in what they want. I think the interesting part is how can you deliver it to them? Will you just copy what you've seen in the other countries? Or will you provide something unique to your Brazilian customer? So I think that's the, uh, uh, the main question that we can talk about. Because if the consumers are similar all over the world, I think the, the fear of the executives are the same all over the world, don't you think? In order to provide this kind of innovation in the, uh, and to understand these changes. Absolutely, and my answers to executives all around the world, whether in Australia, in Europe, they're similar. Have a strong vision, have the customer in mind. Because if you have the vision and the customer in mind, you will win. If not, uh, and if you will be inward focused, and if you will stick to the same principles and technologies and process that you have for the last decades, at some stage there will be a big existing company or a new small company that will serve the customer better and you will become irrelevant to the customer. So the final question. In the uh, West, we're going to have Amazon. In uh, the Orient, we have Alibaba. Uh, how can retailers survive with these great giants among them? Yeah, so I get this question a lot in the countries where they are already very established. I say so number one is if you start from your own um, strength, your own assets, and see how you can develop them with the customers, then you have a chance. So when I talk to retailers, for example, in the electronic space in Europe, I say, what can you provide to the customer that is unique w w because you have stores? And Amazon, with the exception of now of Whole Foods, they don't have a lot of stores. So electronics, for example, you can provide services, you can provide guidance for customers who want to touch products in a way that is unique. So focus on these areas where you can wow the customers and don't be too much in awe and in the defensive with those big players. That's the advice I would give executives. So thank you, Terrier. So to our uh, audience, leadership, vision, look at the consumers and open ears to hear what our Mr. Tayer said uh, for you today. Thank you. Thank you, Tayer. Thank you very much. É isso aí, pessoal. Até a próxima.